Breaking news, baby dolls. This gentle sir, Ben Dubard, who I call Benny Boo, is defending Pulse Chain, Richard Hart and Hex in the local court of South Carolina. He's defending the whole community from the wiener attack, the giant sausage that is coming to just go and just trying to slap everybody on the face. Now, this massive wiener is the name of the stand which the guy suing Richard Hart owns. So his name's Noah. Noah, if you're watching, come on, bro. Don't be a little bitch. Noah, it's 400 bucks, dude. Okay, we've got 170,000 ETH there, bro. You get your 400 bucks back. Hey, Noah, bro, bro, bro. Get your lawyers, Kakel and Kuckman, get them to send me the address for you. Okay, we'll send you 400 bucks, bro. <laughs> and we'll literally send you 400 bucks. Okay, now... This is a real story, all right? Now, friends, firstly, let's enjoy the memes in the picture here. This is a peppy judge. I've placed the Pikachu hat on the judge. This is your friend, Sami, here. we got Ricardo Corazon. This is actually Benny, friends. Now, Benny Boo lives in Mad Gainsland, and here's a message from Joe. After learning from Sami, I've been taking a dump with a straight posture for over 90 days now. My wife loves the improvement. Well, so, you know, just changing one life at a time for the better. And of course, yes, the friend, the guy here, this is actually Noah, the grumpy wiener guy. Now, I know no one believes his story, Joe. It's real, friends. He has a stand. It's called the grumpy wiener. Now, I've written here, local South Carolina hero, Ben Dubard. So, Benny Boo is a staunch Pulse Chain and Hexagon community member. Uh, I say that as a joke because he's like softest, nicest guy ever. Like, he's really, like, like friends, if you, you know, like, you know the friend that you want your parents to meet before you go out on like a four day bender, you bring home Benny. Benny's the guy, your, your mom's like, you know, she's, she's taking the cookies out of the oven. She wants to make him cookies. She's like, oh, that's great. You know, like, you know, if little Jessica was older, I'd get you to date her. Like that's exactly, it. Benny's the guy. Benny's the exact guy. Okay, so look at him, look at him. See what I mean? So now he's defending everyone in court. Now, so let's give you some backstory, right, friends? This is, I know everyone in Pulse Chain community were having fun, make memes great again. Okay, it's great. But this is really, 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 really important. This is your competitive edge, your information asymmetry, which you know about that the rest of the market don't, okay? Because the rest of the market, friends, all they see is one hex chart, which is down 99%. That's all they're looking at. And this is the chart right now, okay? I'll just put it here. This is all they see, okay? The entire crypto community, friends, all they see is this hex chart. They see this down 99%, okay? They see this, oh, you're down 100%. They believe Richard's abandoned and everything. Now, we know, friends, okay, we know the log cope trick, firstly. Like, yay, the log cope. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we know that part. But also, we know that you got given a copy, and you're like, well, with the copy, you're down 98%. Okay, more than 98%. Sweet. But there is a copy. You know there is Pulse Chain and Pulse X. There was the dilution effect as well. So yeah, it sucks, but you still know that, all right? So you know it's not abandoned, but you know, okay, wait a minute. Why did the price go down? Did the price go down because it was abandoned or there was too much inflation given the growth rate? There was too much inflation given the growth rate. Okay, completely different stories, friends. Because remember, if someone says it's abandoned, what they basically believe is, okay, this thing that was promoted will now, now no longer be promoted. So if you basically have no more lifeblood, that's what they basically, the market is giving it, um, too high odds of, of being dead, which we know it's not dead. We know the community's still here, 200,000 active members. There's 170 content creators. There's over 70 streamers now, new ones popping up all the time, okay? So that's the type of environment we know is happening. Now, when's the price going to move up? Well, luckily for us, we can see on chain 170,000 ETH that is still there, okay? So remember, friends, we've got to catch everybody else up to seeing this. So once it starts moving, because obviously the best thing to do is like buy cheap now. But I know, friends, no one wants to buy red candles. They want to go buy and make the mistake of their lifetime by buying green candles. Now, the local hero, Benny Duban, so Benny Boo, friends, he's a Pulse Chain community member. He streams on his YouTube channel. So what's actually happened is, okay, he has helped block the wiener guy from trying to insert his sausage into the Hex community, all right? So literally, he's basically saying, no more sausages. No more sausages to be inserted into the Pulse Chain community. They have had enough. Okay, so I know, friends, no one believes it's real. I mean, we've got to go through it again. No, no one believes this is real, friends. I've got to show you the evidence. It's actually, it actually is true. Here he is, okay? College graduate gets creative during pandemic and opens a successful hot dog stand. So this is Noah, graduated from College of Charleston. Okay, he ended up moving back home to Quinnaby. 
That's when his mum suggested that he open a hot dog stand, which led to the creation of the Grumpy Wiener. So this is actually nice. So shout out, bro. Like I said, dude, I know maybe I called you a little bitch for complaining about 400 bucks, dude. Like, I'm just telling you this now. What you're doing, it's wrong. It's not just wrong. It's immorally wrong. It's bad. And it's literally the equivalent of you got a super soaker. You're just squirting yourself in the face. Because I know you got a couple of cuck lawyers. They said there's a payday in there for you. Let me tell you something. It ain't worth it. You know what you should be doing? Sell a couple of more hot dogs and you should be buying more hex. Okay, why? Because we can see on chain the Pulse Chain Sacrifice address. Maybe you participated for it. has 170,000 Ethereum at a $7,000 ETH. Okay, which is probably coming within the next 12 months. That is 1.2 billion with a B dollars into the Pulse Chain Sacrifice wallet. It's holding it there. And all you need for your hex bag to come up and give you 100x profit is literally a $100 million insertion out of 1.2 billion. Now, people have said, oh, what if he inserts 100 million and then everybody dumps it down? Okay, you still have $1.1 billion on the sideline left to like try again. You see what I mean? So, you shouldn't be like basically trying to make it harder for everybody else to succeed. I mean, you should be back in. I mean, I mean, this is the funny part, friends. Now, I I've got to go through this as well because it's it's kind of funny. But first, friends, I'm starting with Benny because we love and appreciate Benny. Okay, so Noah is suing Richard Hart for four hundred dollars. All right, and there's been an amicus brief, which is a friend of the court, which has been put in by a lawyer because basically, friends, remember Richard Hart is getting sued by the corrupt SEC. And it doesn't work off precedence per se, but it looks good for the whole community. If that judge, okay, I think it was Auntie Carol. Remember I made a video on her? Auntie Carol's the judge. She's seeing the corrupt SEC case with Richard Hart. If Auntie Carol gets to go and see the other judges, Amicus Brief stuff, and they're like, oh, okay, so it's not a security. Like, you know, they're just reading it in more places. They go, okay, it's not a security. What ends up happening here? Okay, they just didn't sell at the top. That's pretty much what ends up happening when it comes to these. Okay, now... Benny, okay, remember, friends, Benny is doing a very, very big favor for the community because he's from South Carolina, okay? I call this special carrot country. Okay, so um, he's basically going to go and say, he's basically going in court, and he was granted by the judge what they call a continuance, right? And a continuance, I mean, I'm not a legal dude, but uh, I think I've broken every law under the sun by this point, to be honest. <laughs> Look, they, they've basically said, oh, oh, something's happening. So the judge, instead of just automatically granting this poor kid, because that's what it is, Fred. It's like he's a poor kid. He needs a haircut. He comes in, and the judge is like, oh, look at this fat dude twerking. I guess you got robbed. It's probably a security. You know what I mean? Like, let's let's sue him. Instead of that, because we have a lot of people coming to defend and go, no, 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 don't listen to this kid. This kid needs a haircut. We'll pay, we'll pay him for the haircut and the 400 bucks. The judge is like, whoa. We need more time to process this. So it's basically you've stopped the momentum in their favor, right? It gives more time for Benny, and he has a legal friend out there called Merritt Abney. So shout out to you, friend Merritt, Mr. Merritt, or Mrs. Merritt. Sorry, don't, don't know these days. Okay, and they're making a case against Hanks being a security, which we, we know is false, friends, because it was, it was made as a finished product. Now, you might say the product is shit, or you might say it's the greatest thing ever. It doesn't matter, okay? It's a, it's a finished product, okay? It is what it is. Also, bro, you bought early, you're on site. That's another thing we're going to go through. So, friends, the legal team on the other side, they're lying. Okay, here's the thing, friends. Like, I'm just, uh, if you go into a casino and you start with a thousand bucks and then you're up at $16,000 now on the roulette table, all right, but then you lose it all, can you go to a judge and say, well, the casino robbed me? The judge is like, you know what, bro, uh, you up 16 grand. Why didn't you get out? Oh, I was playing. I'm playing. Nah, dude. Okay, you just, you're just you guilty of you stayed at the table too long. By the way, once again, everyone else, there's 170,000. I mean, we got to get friends. I can't believe, like, there are genuinely still people every day I wake up. But, but I told you, friends, red candles make you, like, fearful and stuff. Yeah, it truly is. Like, you honestly think, like, if Richard was going to run away with the money, why would he be already inserting, okay, not his sausage, inserting the Ethereum and actually deploying bits and pieces in. Why would he be doing that if he's just going to run away with the money? Okay. Some people say, oh, it's dribs and drabs. Okay. Why would he then go tweet six times about the Ethereum ETF? Why would he make a poll about, do you think Ethereum is going to flip Bitcoin? Why would he then make a tweet as well, which he made yesterday saying, oh, Mt. Gox doesn't have any Ethereum to sell. Oh, just golly gee, friends. Why? Why? I just, I can't figure it out. Like he's literally been spelling it out for you. Information asymmetry. Now, you've probably been wondering, 
Where's the gentle angel music to kind of like smooth things over, okay? A smooth sausage, if you will. Now, and I can't believe this is actually real, by the way. Like, I'm telling you now, it's a simulation, okay? I did not think that a massive wiener, a giant sausage, would be our next big boss. We took on Eric Wall, okay? Eric's going to come back in a season later on, okay? Then we had Blockchain Boy in a, like, weird turn of events. Blockchain Boy, after, like, two weeks, he's like, you know what? You guys are actually cool. I get it. It's like, bro, what, what happened to the full season? So he converts over, and now we've got a new boss, the giant sausage. Oh, <laughs> I know, man, I know. Just imagine, friends. can you imagine one day they have to play my videos in a court case? I'm telling you, it's over for everyone. It's over for everyone, okay? They're probably like, how's this guy made 3,000 videos? Let's see. Let's see if they get it. Okay, now, here's the thing. So, Pulse Chain community, okay, I don't speak for anyone, but I'll pretty much speak for everyone now. <laughs> Pulse Chain community, Richard Hart, are especially thankful to Benny because he actually showed up. It's not just a piece of paper from a, um, like a lawyer, but it's actually like Benny showing up. Like, no, 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 man, there's more things to this, you know? The kid's got to get a haircut first, you know what I mean? Get a haircut. We need him to get a haircut, okay? And put the, <laughs> put your wiener away, sir. So, if you're out there, friends, I mean, you got to follow Benny. He does streams, by the way, of course. I watch I watch Benny's videos, friends. He's, ben, Benny's amazing, of course. Why don't I already? I'm sure I've clicked follow him already. So this is awesome. These are Benny's videos. Okay, he does streaming and stuff for the whole community. Benny's got an amazing story, actually. I remember his story. I think, I think he went to go live in Europe with his missus, and then I think the prices went too low or just the conditions sucked over there. Um, I don't know why. I remember listening to his story. It reminded me of that Simpsons episode where I think Bart goes away to live on a grape, uh, a grape farm. And he's just mashing grapes with his feet all day. And then, like, it's raining. And so I think some French dude. And he has to end up coming home. It, I don't know why it reminded me of that story. And then he comes back and gets a job and everything. It's kind of amazing, friends. These are, these are, these are the battlers. What we call battlers in Australia. Everyone's like a, like a, they're called like a true blue Aussie because everyone, like, has a story where they're just like, you know. Friends, in Australia, no one gets any sympathy for, or empathy. There's just nothing. It's literally like we're on a dirt island, we're all slaves, and even though we're slaves, we're not allowed to winch, okay? And, and everybody gives each other shit. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, that's the culture of Australia, you know what I mean? Like, oh, everybody's doing it tough. Everyone's doing it tough, you know what I mean? It's different to Australia. Friends, you know, in, in, if, you, if you're curious, in America, the politicians in America, they don't talk as, uh, like, vulgar as Australian politicians. And in Australian politicians... Uh, it, it doesn't matter how much money you make. Even if you make like, you know, $900,000 a year, they're like, oh, they're doing it tough. They're battlers out there. They're, they're doing it tough. They're doing it tough. Everyone in Australia is always doing it tough. It's just funny how these things work, these different cultural differences. Now, today, Benny has received the highest badge of honor for his service, which is a banana emoji. Now, as we go down here, now, friends, once again, this is actually not, once again, yes, needs a haircut. We have Richard Hart here. This is actually Benny. <laughs> Benny, you rock. This is him and his missus. It's all great, actually. It's, it's, it's funny how all these things are working out. I mean, like, it's kind of funny. You know, if, I'm just telling you, if one of you guys didn't show up, we're all going to zero. However, the fact that everyone is showing up, that might be 100x. It's happening right now. Okay, now, also, I've got to give a very, very big special shout-out again to Nuclear Herbs. And every time I say Nuclear Herbs, I'm just tech, I'm thinking about a one big... Woo! Every single time, man, every single time, Nuclear Herbs. Oh, man, Wow. Not just any herb, you know what I mean? This one's sending it. Now, there's no possible way this is real. Think again, my friends. So remember, this is from Nuclear Herbs, right? This is both unintentionally hilarious and pretty serious at the same time. Listen up. Some dude named Noah, a recent college grad who lived with his mum in 2021 and quite literally sold hot dogs out of a Lowe's parking lot in South Carolina under the name The Grumpy Wiener, sued Richard Hunt after apparently losing a few hundred dollars in hex. His attorneys filed a John Doe lawsuit hoping to keep his name hidden for as long as possible, probably for the obvious reasons above. Yeah, because they knew, friend, they knew. They're like, hey, listen, we want to take down this guy, but the kid lost 400 bucks. So it's kind of like hard to kind of, <laughs> kind of like, you know what I mean? So, oh man, it's just funny. Now, here's the thing, friends. The evil scum lawyers that are representing the wiener kid, okay? Um, but like, yeah, we got to go hard on him. Okay, firstly, bro, 400 bucks. Are you serious? It's literally $400 is the cost of half a squeaky chair in Australia. Okay. You can make it back in a few days. You know, we'll give you the money, man. We'll give you the money. 400 bucks. 
Now, he has evil scum lawyers, though, okay? As I'm not surprised, the evil scum lawyers. Here they come again. And their Nermans are, their name is Kakel and Kuckman. So Kakel and Kuckman defending Noah, the grumpy wiener kid suing, they've lied to the judge. So here have their statements. They basically said that the price of Hex on August was 0.42 cents. So they, they wrote it as like 0.4, it could be 42 cents or whatever it is. Basically, they're, they're, it, there's like a mis, misrepresentation here. They're trying to say you got destroyed, okay? But actually what's funny is how they're trying to frame it is, okay? Because remember, friends, you got to try to prove that this thing was a scam from the start, okay? Now, it's hard to prove it's a scam when the thing goes up and just as easy as you get in, you could have gotten out. It's very hard to prove it's a scam because then the judge is like, wait a minute, this is just a game of musical chairs. You know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't sound like it was just like the stock market. Like, oh, you had three years to sell the top one and you didn't. Now it drops 70%. Now you're liquidated. You want to sell the financial broker firm? You know what I mean? The judges know that. Everyone knows that, okay? So they even talk about Ben Dubard here. They said, Dubard almost certainly suffered a substantial investment loss. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, hey, Benny Boo, who's now rocked up in court, okay, like, you know, basically like whipping out his wiener as well to fight the other wiener with the sausage attack, sausage fest, okay? The, the other lawyers are saying, no, 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 don't listen to this kid. He suffered a big financial loss as well. No, it didn't. They went up like 100x from that point, literally. If, if it's 0.42 cents. So it, it, you basically get to see that they're basically lying. Now, Nuclear Herb said, you know, sometimes there's errors, sometimes this or that. Ah, I don't think so, man. I think they're just trying to build up the case because they're making a class action lawsuit. And, of course, I want to let you know, um, Nuclear Herb's, his posts on Twitter for us, the lawyers, Kuckel and Kuck Kuckman, took his post and they are showing it in court. So, oh man, this is going to be funny, right? So what I did in classic fashion is I found their post here. He's Kuckel, Kuckel and Kuckman. Our law firm filed, filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of individuals damaged in this investment scheme nearly one year ago. So look at this, they're replying to the corrupt SEC with the Richard Hart, Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X, I mean, like, also, funny friends, remember, there is no incentive token. They don't dare come for the incentive token, do they? I dare you come for the ink, okay? It's kind of funny. Ink does nothing. So isn't that funny? That means I can't go off the meme coins. You know that, right, friends? Just, just interjecting here. Because <laughs> they do nothing. They literally do nothing. Isn't that sad? That's, that's, that's how corrupt this Wall Street bug overlord, bug eating, bug worshipping POSs is. Okay, piece of soy. That's how corrupt it is. The more legit you try to make your coin, the more attack vectors they have on you because they want to own all the property themselves. That's into, that's digital property. Isn't that sad? That's how it works. So if you have no features, which is exactly what's happening now, people are rallying against around stuff. It's amazing. Okay, so that's showing you. That's why all the Americans and all the American companies, the more stuff you do, the higher of a target you are. So that's why they're like, you know, the Americans, we people learn that. There's, that's why meme coins are like, it's a very, very low cost compared to all of these, okay? Also, Kuckel and Kuckman, it's good to see the federal regulators stepping in to help stop this nefarious behavior. Oh boy. So, I mean, like I have left a very gentle message out here for them so they can read this in court. Hey, soy boys, here's an appropriate name for your shitty lying law firm. Kuckel, Cuckled, and Cuckman. And tell Noah the Sausage Kid, I said he's a little bitch for selling and crying about $400 of Hex. Here is a dick with butt with a freedom of peach, because that's what I believe. I believe there's going to be some peaches in every single one of your fridges, and you have the freedom to eat them. So it's pretty, pretty fantastic, friends. I mean, here's a shock Pikachu face. Let's just show you, like, wow, I can't. I can't believe you said that. Wow, wow, wow. Friends, by the way, only in the crypto industry <laughs> will we like jump into a culture casino. And then when someone loses, we go hard on them if they cry too much. All right. If they cry, we're like, hey, man, you didn't get scammed. All right. You held too long. 
you didn't get scammed. Now, you can say it's a scam joke, but, like, at the end of the day, you held too long. All right, and by the way, the cycle's not over yet. Okay, but you know why, friends? It's because everyone loves the casino so much. We don't want the whole casino to be shut down for one person. Because, by the way, we know, friends, by the way, you shut the whole casino down, everyone lo loses. You know that, right? Noah, you know if you literally shut down the whole casino, bro, okay, casino, just like the stock market, they close it all down, everyone loses. You know they're printing currency every day. You know they inflate the currency by 7% per year. You know that, right? Even though they say Kippy CPI is only like 3%, you know that's a load of bullshit too, yeah? Where do you think that excess 4% of money supply goes to? It goes to assets around the world. Real estate, all that property in the stonk market. And guess what? There is an overflow into the bucket of crypto. And the best part about crypto is the narratives that form, because it's so new and so irrational, people don't know how to price it properly. Once we go nuclear to the moon, like a nuclear herb, whoa, okay, we go very, very fast and very aggressive. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. That's why if you just quit and sell, you're basically giving up on your dreams, which is okay. I mean, like if you want to give up on your dreams. For the rest of us, we know that this game can only eventually win. They can only eventually win because there's just simply too many currency units out there in the world. Now, I know because you're like, you know, you're feeling up sausages all day. It's hard for you to like learn this. But I get I've just done the whole hard work for you, man. In my six-year journey into this, I've just literally given you everything in literally 120 seconds. Now, if I just ask you kindly, please pull up your pants, put your wiener away. And it was funny. Mr. Nuclear Herbs called them douche wagons. That's what they actually quoted, friends. That's the funniest part. They literally called him. He literally, his, his quote in here where he called them douche wagons was actually quoted in the actual, that's that's just crazy, man. They're actually taking Twitter posts, friends. Like more and more Twitter posts are making it on there. Like, oh, God help them. They got to they gotta go through some Twitter meta. Like they got to bring in like a, you know, like a, a tweeting expert to be like, no, 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 it sounds like a diss, but he's actually talking good. You know what I mean? It's kind of like we have the problem we have in Australia, the problem. So in Australia, friends, if someone calls you a mate, they're actually calling you a C-U-N-T. They don't like you. No one here calls you, hey, mate. You know what I mean? That's like, oh, that's passive aggressive. I want to kill you. Okay. But in Australia, if someone calls you a C-U-N-T, it's basically like you're like a brotherly sister love. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, come in. Do you need food? Come hang out. Have a beer. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works, friends. It's literally the meta's changed. You got to keep up with the times. That's just how it works here. Everything's in the opposite. I heard Miguelie, Miguelie, DCC, Dollar Cost Crypto, he was joking as well. Like, hey, man, do they have to take a shit standing up in <laughs> in Australia because everything's upside down? Once again, the Simpsons episode, that was funny. Oh, man. God bless his. Okay, now back to the sausages. Now, it's funny, friends, I'm having some fun here. This is the actual eHex price chart. Now, I don't know why, but I don't know. I don't know why, friends. You know, eHex moves the most now. I, I just, it's the thinnest. It's just funny. But all the, all the coins, of course, everything's still low. It's going to take time, man. It's going to take time. So remember, friends, the whole point of showing this, I mean, I trust me, like, it's just so much information asymmetry. However, it's freaking law stuff. You know when the law stuff first happened? I remember I was messaging everyone like, man, I didn't sign up for this. If there's one thing I did not want to become like well hearsed in, it's legal stuff. You can't get me to fall asleep faster than to start talking legal stuff. I'm like, oh my God, bro. However, we sucked it up and for good reason, okay? Good reason is, I mean, I've got to tell you for the 10th time. There's 170,000 Ethereum in there that has very high likelihood of pumping the living crap out of your bags. So if you can remove the risk of the unknown and you have information asymmetry advantages compared to the rest of the market, you will absolutely milk it. And this sausage will be milked, my friends. It's a special kind of sausage. Now, I've already done a post here. I'm going to have to show you again, friends. A lot of people still don't get it, which is just, it's so strange to me, but you can actually calculate how high a price goes based on the liquidity in the book. You know, there's a Uniswap formula. You can insert money. You know ahead of time, if you insert this money, no one clicks out, what's the new price? Because it's all a ratio, okay? Now, this is the look into hex chart, and you can see here, and I've obviously you've got all these squares here, but I've added up the e-hex liquidity, okay, the ask side. And the total number, it's so thin, it's so down, it's only $750,000 on the ask and the bid around there. Okay, so 
750,000 on the ask, man. I can't turn. That is the biggest. But do you want to, actually, do you want to laugh? Do you want to laugh? Okay. You guys know we're still holding Landwolf, right? Landwolf has on the ask side 300,000. Okay. A meme coin that's down, by the way, from the top, it's down 75%. So Landwolf, when it goes up to the top, it'll have like, it'll have uh, 900,000. It'll have more than EHEX. How? How? You know how, man. People with the liquidity, ravage. This is what happens at the bottom of ranges, by the way. That's just what happens, okay? Now, theoretically, okay, let's say nobody sells. All right. To make P e e hex is hex from Ethereum, go up to 55 cents, you need to insert $14 million, okay? And you do that because that's a it's a 343x to get there. So you find the square root of that number. It gives you 18.5x. And that's the number you need to actually multiply the ask sign, okay? But you have the bank Excel wall and all of these, all right? So you get to see all these. You can actually calculate these. But, I mean, like a lot of people say, friends, they go, well, firstly, Rich is not buying it. True. But also, I mean, you don't know that, by the way. <laughs> friends, just imagine he just throws in like a $10,000 buy into eHex on the Pulse Chain side. Oh, my God. That'll be absolute mayhem because everyone's like, oh, my gosh. He was shaking everybody out. Imagine he does that. Just, just imagine Richard Hart uses – he doesn't have to use all of it. Just, he uses some of that sacrifice money and he buys a bit of Hex from Ethereum. I'm um, just – everyone will do – everyone literally go back to every single event for the past 365 days and go, oh, my gosh. They were all rinsed. He was shaking out the weak hands. He was shaking all of them out, the emergency end staking, the crying, the whining, and he did. <laughs> he did. They all clicked sell and they, they quit. Oh, can you imagine the embarrassment on people, friends? Imagine the embarrassment of people. They're like, oh, oh what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Here's the funny part. If they find out he was basically rinsing them out and the candles are red, they won't believe it, okay? But if you print like a 900%, which is a 10X green candle, they'll believe it. They'll believe that they're getting rinsed out. That's just how it is, okay? Now, interesting information for everyone as well. Hex from Ethereum, so the Hex contract had about 100 million USDC on the bid, okay? At the very, very top, back in Sept 2020, Sept 2021 highs. The market cap today is only about 130 million and quite a bit of it was sent into the Pulse Chain plus PulseX sacrifice pit as well. So a lot of people sacrifice as well. So there's less supply than most people think, okay? So, uh, however, knowing all this information, just be careful, right? So you should, which most people already have, right? Secure your Pulse, PulseX and PX and, and ink bags first. Get those first, then you can start playing around with DGEN EHEX if, if you want to play around with that. But remember, you're buying... If it's a meme coin, you're buying 130 million market cap meme coin. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, it's a, it's a powerful meme coin because it's Richard Hart's meme coin at this point, but you're still buying a $130 million market cap coin. You might want to double in that, and then you throw some Pika, Dick with Bart, Freedom of Peach, Teddy Bear, p Dye, whatever it is. You'll throw it in s Trapper Ecosystem, 9-inch. That's okay, but you put them in that same basket. But ultimately, at the end of the day, everyone wins if that PLS uh, – gets boosted up, which hopefully gets uh, pumped up by the, the Ethereum rotation in, okay? So there's your competitive advantage. And I'm going to finish off, okay, with an ode, say, rich to um, Warren Buffett, okay? Now, Warren Buffet, the Oracle of Omaha, right? World's greatest investor. Remember, friends, him and the late Charlie Munger, they, I'll never forget this. They've said this multiple times. They said, look, man, throw out all your university textbook measurements of risk because it's all a bunch of BS, and I always wondered, like, what do they mean? What do they mean? And I finally got it. That's why I've made videos on this a long time ago. And what they say is they go, in the university textbooks, they have to teach you something because they have to give you a universal approach to risk. And how they measure risk is the chance that the thing you're in, the price drops. The price goes up and down and it drops heaps. That's your risk, Okay. But him and Charlie go, no, that's completely the wrong way to think about it. And you got to think, man, for them to think like this, like, you know, pre-internet, pre-wooden cars, you know what I mean? Everybody just had wooden squeaky chairs back then. They're basically saying, no, nah, you're all a bunch of frauds. You're all a bunch of frauds. You're thinking about it completely wrong. And like, you got to understand, like, this is like, you're truly a visionary. When you're looking at all these PhD people, 
with the textbooks and the lab coats, you know what I mean? And they're getting paid by the government to teach his junk. You know, obviously I learned it at university. They're like, no, no, completely wrong. Pfft, you guys are turds. You guys are complete turds if you think like this. He goes, your risk is not this price deviation thing at all, okay? Your risk is the stuff you don't know, all right? And they, they just say it like that and then they walk away. And I'm like, or they like, you know, on the wheelchair now. They're like, just like, they, you know, they uh, do some hot spinning burnouts on the way out. And I'm like, wait a minute. What do you mean? The risk you don't know. And then obviously on my journey, I finally like figured it out. This is a long time ago. I'm like, oh my gosh, now it makes sense because you can see it in crypto. Okay. Your risk is not that the price goes down, even though you think that is. That's only a trading risk for a short-term commission earning cuck, like a VC firm. Okay. Your risk is that things of whatever you own happen that you don't understand. That's your real risk. And that is completely different because it means price drops are opportunity for you now, all right? Because you have an information asymmetry over the average person. So now you look at Hex, Pulse, Chain, and Pulse X differently. Your risk is not that the price drops. Your risk is, for example, the outside person, your risk is, let's say they have know nothing about Benny. They don't know about Benny's big schlong who's going to take over, um, take on the wiener guy's schlong. You know what I mean? In court, they have no idea. Their risk is that, Richard Hart may have abandoned. Their risk is that the corrupt SEC has a good case against uh, Richard Hart. Their risk is that, you know, Maddie Allen's conferences are AI generated and we don't actually have 70 streamers and 170 content creators. That's their actual risk, okay? That's completely their risk. Their risk is that there is a $400 million offer in the order book that they can't see, okay? That might be on chain. You see all these unknowns? But as you venture into the community and you're like, oh my gosh, these two guys with their giant sausages fighting in court, I wonder what's going on. Then you start to investigate, go, wait a minute. These are people who should be suing, but they're not. Interesting. So the wiener guy who needs a haircut, he's fighting Benny Boo, okay, who has a nice set of hair as well. You know what I mean? Something's going on here. And so they learn more. They go, wait a minute. It's not a security Okay, what about the corrupt SEC case? All right, Gary Gensler. All right, he's a semen demon. He's going to take on the world supply of semen. There's a shortage out there, all right? So bet on semen futures if there are out there. Buy every barrel of semen you can. Now, as you go on further, you're probably thinking, oh, okay, okay, okay. Is there any more things to uncover? Yeah, man. People's have, people have like this risk uh, in their mind. They're like, wait a minute. I, I, what if Richard Hart abandoned? I go, okay, he hasn't abandoned, bro. We, we have the wallet address. It has 170,000 ETH in there. You know, and, and guess what? He bought the ETH during this corrupt SEC thing. So he has already demonstrated to the market that he's deploying with the account. He's literally using the account right now. Okay. And you go, oh my gosh. All right. Well, see our friends, you have this giant, giant risk, just risk bar. And as you learn more, your risk goes down and down and down and down. Okay. And then you have, all right, the idea. Okay. What about, how do you know he's going to deploy the Ethereum? I don't know, maybe he's like 15 tweets about the Ethereum ETF. The fact that he sucks off Ethereum ETF, he thinks Vitalik's a genius, he's made all the polls, all the tweets I went through from before, okay? Okay, maybe that has something to do with the fact that it just, see friends, your risk is lowering and lowering. Now, there's a certain base risk that you can just never get rid of, okay? But that's the discount of the market, okay? So the market is literally, see you have all this information with me, we've learned all of these and now basically i'm not sweating at all i don't really care okay i could see it you, you already know all these things going on okay so our risk is so 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 low but th there is that risk that richard just wakes up one day and he's like you know what uh i like xrp i'm out you know what i mean he might that, that's a risk right and he might think it's a very very low risk but the market is giving the risk of the uh the coins failing they're putting it at like a giant 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 red they, they have not absorbed this information okay now you're probably wondering, when, when, Sammy, when, please, tell me when their wieners are finally going to be put away and this wiener fest battle will end. Well, friends, I need to tell you something, okay? If I know one thing about retailers, is they love buying expensive shit. <laughs> so I'll tell you right now, yeah. People will go back and watch my videos, like the Holy Gospel, when they see a big fat green candle shoot up to the sky. That's when they'll be like, oh my gosh, Tommy was right, Tommy was right. No, man, just supply and demand imbalances, okay? The same things I said, just because the price is down, you know, 10x lower than what it should be, and then it goes up 10x, nothing's changed except a few people woke up, 
Okay. But you know, in markets, friends, it's the same thing with humanity. No one wants to be first. Okay. Everybody wants to be second. You know that, right? Because if you're first, you're a maverick, you're a leader, you're rogue, you know, the lone wolf, you're out there on your own going into the unknown. Okay. But if you're second and third, you're like, eh, now I'm joining a trend. Okay. And definitely no one wants to be last. Okay. So that's what it comes to kickstart. And you're probably wondering like, hey, why hasn't Richard done the big fat God candle first to get everyone in? Well, friends, he has tried to with buying Pulsex. The problem is there's too many Jeters. So eventually the Jeters will run out and the the amount of Jeters will be lowered when probably Ethereum is punching up above $5,000. Okay, I know we keep moving that number up, but it is what it is. You just don't know when it comes to these things. Eventually the supply demand imbalance gets so out of whack that any type of demand coming in thrashes everything up, you know? So you already know, friends, like I'm sure by the time Richard gets a good result from the corrupt SEC, we're going to be higher anyway. Like you don't be waiting for that period. But for the rest of us, you can see things like appearing, right? Like Benny, Benny Boot comes out, comes into court. I've got to show you the picture once again. He comes to the court with a fierce, fierce, fierce sausage. And he says, no, 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 no more sausages from you. Take this one. Okay. And here we are battling out in court. So as you can see, friends, this is the type of stuff that he helps lower your risk. Uh, he don't forget that. So you learned all these. This is literally the investment thesis. And yeah, I mean, I've done like, you know, literally three years of homework here for you. Bang, there you go. That's a quick update. What do you do? You know what to do, really. Like friends, not financial advice. DCA, buy more. You probably got enough bullets. Investigate the ecosystem. It is what it is. Or like, I don't, friends, I don't, I, I, I just, I'm starting to tell people now, don't cheat your bags because a lot of people, who are, are worried, but I don't like telling people that all the time. You know why? Because they're baggage for us. They're baggage. Screw them. Screw them. You don't need them, man. They, if they're thinking about dumping now, bro, do you know how close we are? This is literally the worst time of this. We're so freaking close to that retail frenzy coming in. It's not even funny. Like if you're actually thinking about dumping now, I don't know. No one can help you then. Dump, dump and leave. But for the rest of us, we know there are better things to come. Like, subscribe, baby, but I'll catch you soon.